Hello there. This video will show you how to complete uh, problem number one and problem number two in your third Excel assignment. So in this first scenario, this should look pretty familiar. You've seen this before. So we're talking about Theodore again, the owner of Flight Pro, and he has this app that provides maps and real-time weather reports for pilots. And among all of the electronic devices in the population, he knows that on average, it takes 90 seconds to download the maps with a standard deviation or typical difference in download speeds of 30 seconds. And this is normally distributed. But he's in a situation where he has to do a demo of this app for a group of investors. And they have the expectation that the download speed will be 60 seconds or less. So he really doesn't have time to fix the speed right now. So before he gives the demo, he has to figure out how likely each of these outcomes is going to be. So he wants to know the probability that the device he uses in the demo will have a mean download speed of 60 seconds or less. Now keep in mind we're talking about a single device, so we're not using the sampling distribution, we're using the normal uh, distribution of the population, right? We're looking at scores right now, not sample means. So in other words, we want to know the probability that X will be less than or equal to 60, or the download speed for a single device will be 60 seconds or less. You can use Excel to find this. All you need to know is what the mean and the standard deviation is, and then what you can play around with um, the normal distribution function in Excel. So let's go ahead and record some information. And what I'd like to do is click and drag to one side of the screen each thing that I'm going to be using. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to take my mean equals. I'm just going to control C to copy that. And I'm just kind of adding some information to my sheet. And then in a separate cell, I'm going to put in 90. Now the reason I didn't just put mu equals 90 in a cell by itself is because eventually I'm going to want to click on this cell to get that numeric value. Now I'm just going to steal from my assignment, control C to copy. The standard deviation in the population equals 30 seconds. So now he needs to do a demonstration of the app and he wants to figure out how likely is it that his device will have a download speed that's 60 seconds or less. So I'm going to record that bit of information as well. So just steal that, control C to copy. Control V to paste. Just staying organized. I'm going to double click between A and B to kind of stretch that out so I can see everything there. Now I'm going to go ahead and steal this for the next problem for part B. Now I want to know the probability that the device he uses in the demonstration will have a mean download speed longer than 60 seconds. So I'll just put that right there. And now we can work within Excel to figure out the answer to these questions. So in Excel, we don't have to use the unit normal table. We can just, or z-scores for that matter, we can just go equals, start typing in norm, double click norm.dist. And you'll see it tells you all the pieces of information that you need. So you need the x value, well that is 60 in this case. That's the download speed of interest. The mean in this distribution is 90, comma. Standard deviation is 30. Comma. Now, if you didn't have the mean and standard deviation in your worksheet, you could just physically type the values in instead of clicking on the cell. Now, here we've got a true or false situation. We are going to go with true because we are looking at the cumulative probability. Less than or equal to is cumulative. False would just give you the, um, the height of the curve, and that's not anything that we want anything to do with. So then we close it in a parenthesis. I double-clicked true, hit enter and we have our value. Now if we want to know the probability that the download speed will exceed 60 seconds, we would go equals. Now think about this, right? The probability of any download speed, any possibility, would be 1. So if we want to figure out what's left, right? So if it's not less than or equal to 60, it would be greater than 60, you can use the complement rule. So another way of saying this would be, what's the probability that the download speed will not be less than or equal to 60. When you've got a not situation, you're working with the complement rule. So we'll take one, right, 100% chance of any download speed minus the probability that it'll be less than or equal to 60, or in other words, 15 point, roughly 15.9%, and you have what's left in the distribution. So now you can take these two values, and if you want to round them to the thousands place, you can just highlight them, right click, 
go to Format Cells, Number, Three Decimal Places. And now you can just grab those values and put them into your assignment. So I'll drag it over, take this one, drag it over here. And I will just control C to copy, control V to paste. Go ahead and click this little button and do that so it just keeps the text in its original format. And then you can hit control B to bold or you can go up here and hit bold. It's always good to bold your answers so it makes it nice and easy for me to find. Now a shortcut to pasting it and then fixing it is going up here, the arrow below paste, and just keeping the text only and bolding it. So you've got your two answers. So now I want you to answer part C on your own, thinking about what the, distribu what the distribution look like and what these probabilities indicate. All right, so for number two, you should know the process for doing part A. I just demonstrated it for you. Except this time, your mean we have a new distribution, right? So now we have a situation where Theodore wants to, let's go back to the big one, he wants to hire a software developer to help him with this download speed problem. He has a friend at Full Sail University that works for the software development program and he's going to help him find a recruit from some graduates from the last year. So over the last year, the cumulative GPA among software development graduates at Full Sail was normally distributed with a mean of 3.0 and a standard deviation of 0.5. So Theodore only wants to consider people who have a GPA above 3.75 and you're going to use Excel to figure out what proportion of graduates would be considered for hire. And just to give you kind of a hint, so the mean is 3.0 and the standard deviation is 0.5. So for this one you could put in mean equals 3, standard deviation equals 0.5 and then you can work with the norm dist function to figure out what you're looking for based on what I showed you here. You may want to pay special attention to how I found this one because this is a greater than situation and that's exactly what you have in part A. Now let me show you how to use the norm.inv function to instead of going from a score to a proportion, you're going from a proportion or a percentile to a score. So we have a situation where we want to know what GPA is at the 80th percentile in this distribution with a mean of 3.0 and a standard deviation of 0.5. And I put in here that it's normally distributed because of course you can't use these functions just like you can't use the new unit normal table unless you have a distribution that's roughly normal so that it has predictable probabilities within it. So we want to know what GPA is at the 80th percentile. So we'll go into our Excel sheet and just to kind of, I'm going to insert a tab here, so right click, insert, just to kind of record what's happening. So here you'll want to put your, um, what was that question? When you solve for A, make sure that you label it so when I look at your workbook I can find all of your stuff. So you'll find this one on your own, but now I want to know what score X is at the 80th percentile. So I'm going to use, again, the inversion of the norm, norm function. So equals norm.inv. So double click that. Again, that was pretty fast. So you start typing in norm.norm.inv, the inverse of the normal cumulative distribution. So the probability is my percentile, and I'm in the 80th percentile. So that would be like 0.80 in the body, right? So my probability of interest is 0.80. If it was the 30th percentile, you'd put 0.30 there instead. Then comma, click the mean, comma, click the standard deviation, and hit enter. Again, I'm going to go ahead and round this to, this time I'll round it to the hundreds place because that's typically what GPAs are rounded to. That was kind of fast again. So right click, format cells, number, two decimal places is just fine. So I'm going to control C to copy this and then I'm going to paste it into my assignment, keeping text only and bolding it. So somebody with a GPA of 3.42 is in the 80th percentile. So Theodore will consider anybody with a GPA of 
3.42 or higher in this scenario, scenario B. All right, so you can use this information to answer part C and part D on your own. You don't need Excel for that. And that's all I have for you for number one and number two, and I'll make a separate video for the rest of this assignment.